Hey everyone and a warm welcome back to my channel. Glad you could tune in. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my future videos as soon as I upload. Now to today's video, I just wanted to take you guys through the construction of hollow block floors. Uh, why they have seen a resurgence in the recent days and how they may actually be a better suspended slab solution for your multi-story home or residential development as compared to the regular uh, concrete slabs. Now without much further ado, let's get into the video of today. You may have come across these blocks when you encounter a building site. Usually most people are just going to assume that these are concrete blocks for walls, a popular alternative to masonry walling. While it may be true in some cases, most of the time they are what are called hollow pots or hollow blocks due to their empty hollow interior whose importance we are going to discuss very shortly. So a few days ago I happened to pass by an acquaintance's ongoing construction project. His name is Vincent and I have actually left a link to his uh, LinkedIn profile down here for more info on his construction business. And it turns out they are really doing a great job with the construction there. And incidentally, they just happened to be laying a hollow block slab system, which was perfect for me and luckily for you too, because I got to witness in action our today's topic. So exactly how do we lay these blocks? At first glance on the bottom side of a floor that has been built with these blocks, one may be tempted to feel like it's almost like a block may slip out of the slab and knock you out cold. While this is not so far-fetched, with the right skills and technique, these blocks work just fine, perhaps even better than regular suspended slabs, and we are going to see exactly why uh, in a short while. So these blocks are usually laid on support formwork and forcework, just like you would for a normal concrete, reinforced concrete slab. They are laid side by side in equally spaced rows, forming a long hollow tube along the process. There's a small space that is usually left in between each row and it's, it's called a rib. So this rib is where the blocks actually derive their structural strength. The width, as well as the number and the size of reinforce, reinforcement laid in the rib is designed for and uh, determined by a structural engineer depending on the different loads imparting the floor. Periodically along the greater lengths, these rows may be interrupted by regular suspended primary and secondary beams to help with the load carrying. Once they have been laid nicely with the ribs correctly sized and placed, now is usually the time to spread a BRC mesh, just like the one you would encounter for ground floor slabs, and then a thick layer, sometimes of even up to 150 millimeters of concrete, is laid on top of the blocks and in the ribs also. Then this concrete is properly vibrated, you know, as always. Important to note is that when the last blocks on the edges are laid, they are usually sealed, typically beforehand, maybe a few days beforehand they will be sealed, sometimes with concrete or any other suitable filler material that's available to prevent wet concrete uh, from seeping into the hollow blocks. When the casting of concrete has been completed, it should be taken through the necessary period to cure, just like every other concrete structure. And the surface should be kept wet for at least seven days to prevent cracking as a result of rapid drying. So why hollow block suspended slabs instead of regular reinforced concrete suspended slabs? One may ask. Well, for a start, this is a very economical way of doing suspended slabs because the cross-sectional area of reinforcing steel is greatly reduced, except for the ribs and the adjoining beams. If you look at the normal way of doing slabs, you have to literally create a mesh of reinforcing steel on the bottom side and on the top side to achieve enough tensile strength. And if you can take most of that out and replace it with hollow blocks, immense savings will be definitely yours. Secondly, these blocks, because of the fact that they are hollow inside, but retain great structural strength, this greatly reduces the dead loads, usually imposed on a structure by itself when using regular reinforced concrete slabs. 
and thus opens up quite many possibilities in terms of the ceiling spans and secondary beams required. Lastly, something that is quite underrated when it comes to privacy in home and residential projects is the need for sound insulation. People nowadays feel that you need to have some sort of privacy to keep your business private. So while we have lots of soundproof doors and wall systems, not so much can be said about floor slabs. And this hollow block suspended slab system is, is almost magical in the way those dragging and banging and stamping sounds are insulated too in the lower levels. As you can see, there are quite the benefits here with these systems and it's no wonder it has become so popular with designers and developers alike. The next time you're cracking your head on some ways to cut costs and perhaps improve user experience for your home or residential project, I bet now you have a new alternative in mind. I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please give this video a thumbs up. Trust me, it gives creators like me motivation to keep making more great content for you. I wonder, what do you think using hollow blocks? Would that be beneficial with your project? Leave me your thoughts down here in the comments section and make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. I will see you soon with more great stuff. Cheers.